person got it, we'll try again. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, thank you for joining us for this Earth Day kickoff. For those of you who got here early, we had about 70 of these uh, Bike New York reusable water bottles, and we encourage you to use these instead of water bottles because all of those water bottles end up in our oceans. Uh, in addition, if you're one of the people who's uh, interested in reducing your carbon imprint and happens to cycle or use other non-motorized transportation like wheelchairs, uh, we're encouraging you to get these and make sure that people can actually see you uh, when you're biking and it'll make it safer for you and the people on the street. Uh, that's also coupled with uh, our favorite I Park New York uh, bike bells. And if you are riding a bike, especially if you're a commercial cyclist, you need one of these. And people need to be able to hear you when you're going so that people don't run into each other. And so those are just some of the things that we're giving away. Every commercial cyclist on the Upper East Side has been offered these lights, these bells, as well as safety vests. And uh, so I'm your city council member, Ben Kalos. You can tweet about this event at Ben Kalos. Uh, the information will be throughout the presentation. And we wanted to do this ahead of Earth Day uh, because it's sadly one of the very few times people think about how they can save their environment. I want to uh, thank our co-sponsors this evening, uh, Public Advocate Tish James, Co-President Gail Brewer, Senators Jose Serrano and Liz Kruger, Council Member Dan Garovnik, and Assembly Members Dan Court and Rebecca Seawright. We're actually joined by Rebecca Seawright's staff that they can stand uh, and wave. If anyone has anything for the state issues, they are around. Uh, and we thank them for our their co-sponsorship. And so for the run of show tonight, just so you know, uh, we will be having a presentation on uh, Adopted Planter, followed by uh, DSNY, talking about how you can do recycling in your building of electronics, uh, old clothing, textiles, as well as electronics. Uh, Pro NYC and their composting programs, access to fresh and healthy food. Uh, we have Bike New York here. They're the ones who gave us these lovely bottles. We'll talk about ways you can learn to ride, learn how to ride safely. And even uh, we've got City Bike here. We'll be giving away free day passes and teaching you how you can use their system. And I think the piece that most people are here to learn about is the uh, single-use bag reduction legislation and to get your free reusable bag. And uh, so that's the run-up show. We hope to wrap up uh, around 8 o'clock. Uh, that being said, as we have elected officials uh, step in, we will interrupt the program and it happen. So uh, the first piece I'll ask Sarah Gallagher from Upper Greenside to join us uh, is uh, Spike Island Gardening. And uh, so there are a couple of different types of planters that are available. There's sidewalk planters that might be in front of your buildings. And we're going to try to get as many of those adopted. And we're also focused on Bike Island on 1st and soon to be 2nd Avenue. Uh, they come in two variations, with a tree or without a tree. Uh, and I think the key thing you may ask is, well, why do some of them have them and some of them don't? It's because some of them have mechanicals or other things underneath that we can't get a tree in. That being said, you can always contact our office or Sarah at Upper Great Side to ask, and we can always get you that answer. We have some helpful tips on the planting season here. Uh, we also have some of the things that you'll be dealing with, which is garbage, soil, removing weeds, uh, some do's and don'ts, and uh, these things are all available from our offices as well as Upper Green Side. Um, there's some different types of plants you may choose, whether they're annuals or perennials, and uh, Upper Green Side, if you want to just talk to a little bit about what you're doing with plants. Um, what are we doing with plants? Yes, we do have we do have a uh, suggested plant list, but we also have this fantastic asset. Bamford Weissman, who is the landscape gardener at Carl Schertz Park, is our advisor. And um, we're, gonna, we're also soliciting for the people who already have um, adopted islands, and it's now in like two years, um, who, what's been successful for them, what's not been successful for them. And we're pooling all of this information. We're also going a little scientific this year. Um, we're soil testing every island, so um, you'll know if you need any amendments. We do get free compost from the city, 
Um, but we were actually thinking, since we've got compost in the last couple of years, that the soil that's in the islands is pretty fabulous at this point. And you get free mulch for you, you get garden gloves, we offer a lot of support. Um, and at this point, we're, we're thinnest in terms of adoption it's in the 60s and the 70s. So get out and garden. We're hoping we want, we know we have to get fencing. Um, the dogs are, the dogs are, as we all know. Um, and in terms of the trees, yes, mechanicals, but in other instances, no, we just, trees have died and they haven't replaced them. Uh, I am constantly on the case of the parks people uh, that cover Manhattan. I did like this same thing over Easter. I sent uh, Liam Cabin, I was the assistant park uh, person in poor Manhattan, like a picture of an Easter bunny saying, Easter bunny wants you to, us to give, you to give us trees, you know, filling our bike items and stuff. And actually he has decided, uh, he is bending every effort to do so. Yes, sir. Uh, what are the flags with the white flag? With the that means the tree's going to be planted. And they're actually going to appear at 73rd Street. Um, I'm not sure why there um, and not elsewhere where we are missing trees. He has, uh, Mr. Cavanaugh has the entire list and actually Mr. Castro as well. So um, we're, to my understanding of why it's that originally it was because they needed to lengthen the arm of the traffic signals. They were like looking forward 40 years to when the tree branches would get in the way of the traffic signals. It's like, huh? But anyway, it's like that. Um, composting, if you want to do it, um, it's going to come down here. You can always go up to the 82nd Street Market on, on, on Saturdays and do that. Good. All right, guys. So, uh, we want to thank you for being on. And uh, please consider adopting. And so, just some expectations so you know. Uh, we're expecting that you work with us to get these planters watered two to three times a week. It doesn't have to be you, it's hopefully you, and sometimes it's working with a neighbor uh, or one of the stores that might lend you a bucket. Uh, also, we're hoping that you're going to maintain the planter throughout the year, uh, and if you're going to be away for any period of time, you need to let us know, as well as if you run into any issues, like the tree is dying or things like that, even if you haven't adopted, uh, these are our contact information. My information is pretty much on everything, but Upper Green Side is available at 212-759-6895 or easy to remember, uppergreenside at gmail.com. If you're not able to meet the requirements, we can figure out how we can help you. And if your planter is repeatedly neglected uh, and the plants are just dead, we will reassign them. So hopefully we can keep this neighborhood as green as possible. And so our uh, next uh, presentation will be from Department of Sanitation. And uh, we are joined by uh, Jessica Schreiber um, from Department of Sanitation. And uh, one of the great things about living in Manhattan and in Council District 5 is it is so much easier to minimize your footprint on the environment. Uh, people who live outside of apartments generate more waste than people who live in apartments. But that being said, we can minimize your waste even more with three different opportunities to recycle. Uh, if you have electronics like this laptop or phones or things like that, normally you have to go to a Best Buy or a location that accepts electronics recycling. That's the wall. But if you live in this district, you can get electronics recycling in your building. Similarly, we'll be hearing from Grow NYC about opportunities for organics, but if you don't want to do that, you can actually just do it in your building. And last but not least, if you've got old clothing, that's also available. So Jessica will present on how you can bring it to your building. Good evening, everyone. My name is Jessica Schreiber. I'm a senior manager with the Bureau of Recycling and Sustainability. I specifically oversee all apartment programs for recycling. Um, as the council member said, the first and most important of which is our e-cycle NYC program. Starting in January 2015, it became illegal to put electronics at the curb for disposal. Um, instead, they have to be handled properly with recycling. So you have a couple of options. Um, one is to take them to local retailers or thrifts like Best Buy, Staples, Salvation Army, Goodwill. 
We also host collection events twice a year in Manhattan. Soon we'll be near Columbia and we'll also be in Union Square. Um, we also have a special wage drop-off site downtown in the financial district. But what's most convenient for apartment buildings is to sign up for our e-cycle program. Your building signs up, uh, you receive a collection bin or we work with you to find a storage location in your apartment building. After you've stored a few items, you just call or email us and we come pick them up for free. It's by far one of the most convenient ways to get rid of your e-waste responsibly in the city. It's a free program funded by the manufacturers through the state law and it's really simple to sign up. Um, management and supers will help manage that program in your building. <laughs> Very similar is our Refashion NYC program for clothing. We provide you with a free collection bin that you can put in your laundry room or basement. Then you can donate your textiles from home. You don't have to bring bags down the street or on the subway or in a cab. You can donate your unused items right from your own home. And this includes shoes and handbags, purses, jackets, towels, linens. And it doesn't have to be in perfect condition. As long as it's clean, if it's missing a button, or it's stained, or it's torn, we'll still take it. Those textile materials still have value and help reduce waste. And finally, uh, our organics program for high-rise buildings. Every apartment building in Manhattan is eligible for curbside organics collection. We work with your super and your manager to set up a location in your building where people can separate their food waste. Then three times a week, every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, you roll out your brown bin to the curb, and the city picks it up for composting. That compost of which goes into some of those um, tree beds and parks throughout the city. Uh, this is a new program. There's about 200 buildings in Manhattan participating right now. Um, it will be rolling out soon citywide, but it's free to get the bin now and get signed up um, and help support our city reducing our waste and meeting that zero waste goal. Um, finally, just if you have questions about traditional recycling, metal, glass, and plastic, paper, what can and can't be recycled, I have fridge stickers in the back. Um, these are an easy how-to reminder of what should go in the blue bin, what should go in the green bin, and what's accepted in New York City's program. Uh, together, we can all make sure that we're recycling properly and reducing our waste. Are we taking questions? Okay. Go ahead. Is there anything in the works about Recycling uh, medicine and cosmetics. Uh, the question was, is there anything to recycle medicine or cosmetics? Right now, our safe disposal events that I mentioned um, at Columbia Union Square will take old medications. And we're also working with um, some legislation to have pharmacies become take-back centers for expired med or unused medications. Sure. <laughs> I can't believe I'm asking this, but um, what do you do with the actual plastic bags that you bring your groceries back with? Plastic bags? Yeah. Um, there's a couple of things happening with plastic bags right now. Uh, right in general, uh, they're not accepted in our plastic recycling. We accept all rigid plastic. Um, so plastic film like that is not accepted, which means you should either throw it away or um, most retail locations should have a plastic bag recycling drop off. So Wayne Reeds, Christie's, um, a lot of supermarkets in the city, you can bring the bags right back to where you got them for recycling. Okay. Um, just in my building in particular, there are two bins, one for your paper, the other for whatever. And then there's a... Um, a chute. A chute right mm -hmm. next to it. Um, I see that people put all their paper goods into a plastic bag and then put it in. Yeah, they bring boxes down and they don't cut them up, much less tie them up. Right. Isn't it the tenant's responsibility to cut them up and tie them up and put them down there? So our recycling program in New York City for metal, glass, and plastic and paper is mandatory and it's the tenant's responsibility to recycle. Different buildings might have different systems in place for who does the actual breaking down and tying. But we do have training programs for that, so if you want to talk to me after, I can talk to you about some of our training for tenants and building staff. Yeah. Oh. Um, stretch plastic with bubble glass is going to be taken to the west side, um, whole foods. Great. That's another option. And I saw one more question. Is there any limitation to the size of the apartment building for the uh, composting, and when will it be rolling out? Sure. Um, the question was, is there any size limit on the building? For all three programs,
programs, e-waste, textile, organics, as long as you have 10 or more units, you can participate. Um, organics is active now. All these programs are active now. I have sign-up sheets in the back. Um, if you're interested, sign up. There's a small enrollment process where we give you basic training on how to separate your food waste, and then you can begin setting out. But does it have to go to building management or can I request it as a tenant? For all three programs, we work with building management, but you can request it as a tenant, and we'll contact your building management for you. So one of the questions is, recycling is tough. We have to separate everything. Do I need to clean out everything and wash it out, or uh, can I just throw it away like I throw it away in the trash? Um, I get that question a lot, actually. Can everyone hear me if I'm not? Good job. No. Um, <coughs> for the most part, it's always preferable if you can rinse it. You do not have to run it through the dishwasher. You do not have to wash it like it's dishes. If you can just rinse it quickly and throw it in, that's great. But we won't like exclude your recycling. very much and so uh, it's okay to get up during these presentations and so in fact there's the program enrollment form so if you're able to tell us who your building manager is and the programs you'd like to sign up for we're hoping to be able to very soon announce that this is rolled out in lots of different places and if you want an idea of what the things look like uh, in terms of the organic collection it will look like one of these brown bins in your basement or wherever you deposit your trash. Uh, with regards to the electronic recycling, you'd be getting a metal mesh container system that you can put your stuff in. And with regards to the clothing and textile recycling, that's what it would look like. I'm sorry we don't have slides. Uh, and please, the orange tablecloth in the back, head on back, uh, watch out for the rush. And thank you, if we can thank our presenters. If you have additional questions, down there. And so our next presentation is going to be from Nicole Tucker at Grow NYC. She's going to talk to you about how you can do composting if you don't have it in your building, as well as how you can get access to uh, fresh farm-to-table food uh, without uh, having to go very far.
So you'll be able to purchase your food if you just keep any of the parts of the food you don't use, your apple cores, your two thick colored stems. Keep them in the freezer, keep them in the fridge, bring them back and we'll uh, compost them for you. Um, I just want to talk briefly about what it looks like when you get a food box. I brought a food box with me from one of our other distribution sites that happened today. This is, this, this is one we had in 2013. Um, this was actually Halloween. So there were Anaheim peppers, um, all kinds of wonderful things. And here is, we went to the Gristini's on 26th Street and priced out what it would cost if you actually purchased all of these items individually. Um, these are all locally grown. Um, but in, when you go to some place like Christie's, your price for lettuce is coming from California. It burns a lot more cal uh, fuel calories than if you buy it from a New York farmer who's 150 miles outside of the city. So where does our produce come from? It comes from all, this is all of our, uh, all the farms we're sourcing from. The ones that are way up in the north, that tends to be our maple syrup folks and our grain people. Um, and we have a few people in Jersey and Pennsylvania, but almost everybody else is New York State farmers. We work with the wholesale arm of Grow NYC, which is the Green Market Hub. Um, and what we do there is we source and aggregate and deliver farm produce to all kinds of buyers. So if you um, ever use the food services here at the Lenox Hill Neighborhood House, or at the senior center, if you ever have lunch there or dinner there, they're purchasing food, their produce from us. They're serving you guys locally grown produce. Um, it's been a really wonderful partnership and we're really excited about it. Um, we also sell the grocery stores, we sell the restaurants like Gramercy Tavern, and the potatoes that Gramercy Tavern buys are the same potatoes that show up in your food box. It's the same exact produce. There's no second tier, it's all the same stuff. Um, our goal with this whole thing is to not only decrease the amount of oil that people are using in terms of how their food is coming in, it's also to keep our uh, biodiversity in the state up by having farming instead of just more factories or more housing. Um, we also provide our farms with fair prices, we're supporting local economies, and we're protecting the farmland. So the farms deliver to our warehouse, and then the warehouse breaks up their pallets of produce, and they go to things like our programs, like Food Box and Youth Market. They go to institutional buyers, like the like Neighborhood House, restaurants and grocers, uh, like the Slope Food Co-op, and uh, University Cavern. And then um, food access programs like the ones run by the United Way. And then that food comes back to you guys. And I just brought a bunch of slides to show you some of the variety that we have in the food boxes. This is a box from this winter that had um, golden oyster mushrooms. We just started working with a mushroom farmer in Pennsylvania. They're really great. They, they grow in these amazing buildings that they built themselves and they heat it with uh, chopped wood. It's, it's like a little bar with two people. Um, so those are beautiful golden oyster mushrooms from them. Every winter, um, every September, we do a back to school block box where we highlight apples and oatmeal for a good morning breakfast before you start school again. Uh, this is what it looks like just in a bag. <laughs> Our one set street uh, a few months ago. Uh, this is one of our sites in uh, Queens at the J. Reese uh, NYCHA Health Center. We have a food box there. We have a food box in uh, Chinatown. Um, just all kinds of wonderful, beautiful produce. This is one we have at Bronx Works. Some sites we put out everything, other sites we pack everything up. Right now at uh, Lenox Hill we pack everything up because we're in a really tiny space, but once we move back outside and the weather's starting to warm up and stabilize, we tend to do it more like this style where you come and you just pick out which pieces of fruit you want. We have a lot of the wonderful volunteers who come, they do food demos, they cook for you, it's really great. So um, that's Food Box, that's our remarket program. Um, 
I'm more than happy to answer questions. I know I went really fast, but there's only 10 minutes. Yes. So, yeah. No, you don't. And then you don't. Exactly. So, with Foodbox, there's no membership. You don't have to pay more than one week in advance. You do have to pay the week before because if 100 people sign up, then we know we have $1,200 to spend on food. You know, if 50 people show up, we only have $600 to spend. So, all that money is going directly back to the farmers. We're not really keeping any of it. Um, the Lenox Hill site is year-round, so if you go next Tuesday to the first Avenue entrance, you can just sign up, ask for Abby, she is the site coordinator here at Lenox Hill. Um, and then uh, we have a bunch of other sites that run July through uh, November. Any other questions? Is there just one size box, so like, if you're just a single person, like, you have a lot of just single people, they can eat that? Yeah, so there's only one size box. Um, we found it would be it was really too, we, when we first started our first year, we tried to do a half box and a full box, and it was just really difficult to kind of do that. A lot of single people will come every other week, so because you don't have to pay all at once, you can pay. You can say, okay, well, I live alone. Um, I like to pay twelve dollars for two weeks from now, and the coordinator will write down the date. And you'll just show up two weeks later and pick up the produce. No, they have all. Anything else? Thanks so much, guys. Please stop by and see the produce.
cost factor when you, you there is everything's free of charge when you come to do an application through us. Otherwise, you can bring home big hands. Well, I thank you for your time. Thank you. So the MTA sign up will be uh, closing in about five minutes. So if you would like to sign up for a reduced fare or pick up the schedule, now is your time. Similarly, if you're interested in the uh, Growing YC programs, their free, uh, their uh, free market schedule or items like that, please grab that in five minutes so that they can head out. Also, for the Department of Sanitation, they will be heading out. So uh, we will be uh, three to four of our presenters in I-715. So now is a good time to hop on up and go learn more. Our uh, next presenter is uh, Mike New York. And uh, we welcome him. Uh, we have Rich Powell. Good evening, I'm Rich Conroy from Life New York. Um, we're going to start with a short little video, if we have sound through the computer, um, to introduce to you what Life New York does. If we don't have sound, we'll skip. They know if you get out to that fight, they have to remember that so many people out there just know they're not to that fight. My name is Ken Patsuda, and I'm the President of CEO of Happy Day. The floor of the earth is a fight that I've been a prison for a piece of ownership in New York City. And that's going to happen when we realize that stuff is going to be right. And then we can go back to the and the and the and the the and 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 the the and 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 the the and 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 the the reason why I think I'm going to be so successful and why we're going so fast is because of our volunteers. The support from the team is so great. They're very patient. It's an absolutely great program. And I truly love liking you know, 